that felt over and unders. Like, is this the one I actually want to bet, and I actually want to put a lot on it? Mm, Ridley. Calvin the Ridley. Boy Ridley. He's done gambling back. on draft teams. <laughs> he's already evolved. <laughs> he's already evolved. <laughs> so, yeah, so Ridley probably shouldn't have watched this show, but uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's coming back. And The reason is there's three things guaranteed in life. Death, taxes, Patrick Mahomes winning over 11 games in the NFL. Dude. I'm going to go with the worst team in the NFL. I don't know if they'll win a game. That is a yeah. great pick. What's up, boys and girls? Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. Today I got Andrew Brady, DFS by the numbers. You know, we talked about his journey doing YouTube, why he decided to stick with UFC, how his success has leveled up. He's one of the top UFC prediction YouTubers. Then we talked some football. You know, we did over-unders today. That was a lot of fun. Just a good time all around. But if you're not subscribed, can you please do that? It helped a lot. You know, we're at two over 250 mail. It costs zero dollars to be subscribed. Support the boy. Um, thank you guys so much. Welcome to Catching a Vibe. This is episode 24. I'm your host Drew, and today I'm joined by Andrew Brady, or better known as DFS by the numbers. Andrew, how we doing, my guy? Doing pretty good. I uh, I got a coffee because I was up. Uh, I had to get a Celsius. Hey, there the we boy's go. been so, grinding today. Yeah, I was up uh, early today, so it's my actually my second coffee. I had a double coffee at sometimes. But this uh, is my second one too as well. So we're yes. on caffeine right now. And I had uh, I think I had like a C four as well. So a C four. Uh, like maybe I'm overdoing. Love it, me but, a C four. But I think it was uh, well needed for this podcast. Yes. Yes. So I've known Andrew pretty much like my whole life. Me and his younger brother Austin been BFF since fifth grade. Also, the Grays one two punch and home run derby. We're... Tell you what, he's trying to pull everything instead. He's got a lot of power. He can go right center field. Big mistake of his trying to just pull. Season, can he get on a streak here at the home run derby and put on a show? This one is high to straight away center field. And he looked as you... I, I need to do a home run derby next. You do, dude. Get the boys. Then played on the 2016 Martinton Dukes 10 0 team. This guy over here, practice, and then Chris Pinnell, one on ones, but they always try to moss me. I was not having it. Every time you get down on the red zone, Marlon Humphrey loves to be up there and press, get physical. So, Andrew, let's get started. How did you get the idea, like, do you too? Um,. Well, you know Chris. Uh, yeah. Chris started doing like some some random like fantasy football videos, I think, mm -hmm. and you guys started having some success with it. I'm like, man, I might I might try this as well. You know, that's how every like yeah. YouTube channel does. Yeah, just just dip my dip my toes in, right? Like, I think I can do that. Yeah, dude. so I, I dipped my toes in, mm -hmm. and I started like doing a bunch of sports. I started I did a PGA, I did NASCAR, I did NFL, I did UFC. And then after a while, I like kind of started eliminating things that weren't really working. Like PGA wasn't really working. NASCAR wasn't really it was working, but not as well as yeah. I wanted to. And then what was you know working with NFL, MMA, and then originally, and then after that, you know UFC started really kicking off. So I just took out NFL, and for like the past two years, I think I've been strictly UFC. And I've done some NFL work for some other websites. I did mm -hmm. some work on pub sports and football diehards, but. My channel as of now is, is right now UFC. UFC is like the perfect sport too to cover. It's all year yeah. round too. We were mm -hmm. talking about this a little earlier. Yeah, and uh, not a ton of people do a lot of UFC content. So I feel like it's a really niche a niche thing to do at, at the moment. But mm -hmm. So I kind of kicked off after that. Are you like one of like the biggest UFC? Yeah, I'd say I'm up YouTubers? there. In terms of like, I do like predictions. I'd say um, probably the third or maybe fourth like mm -hmm. top five wow. biggest channels out there that's crazy um there's this one dude that has like 100k subs i'm at like 20 something there's mm -hmm. another channel that's like 30 something and then there's a bunch of that have like a couple thousand but yeah, yeah. I'm, i'd say i'm up there that's cool bro so like what's like your weekly like schedule to prep for a video or um, a card so I recently bought a walking treadmill desk, which is freaking <laughs> really? awesome. Because like I'm I'm always like working and like sitting on my butt the whole like why might as well get a walking treadmill desk and just walk while I'm working. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I research the entire fight card, um, watching you know fight after fight. I type in all the stats. I have a big stat sheet, 
and that usually takes me probably a whole day, like Sunday or Monday. Mm -hmm. And then I start to get into my content. I do a live stream Sunday, and then I do a live stream Monday, and then a live stream Wednesday, and then a live stream Friday, and then a live stream Saturday. And in between those, I'm doing like a bunch of different videos, yeah. like a prediction video, a DraftKings video, a prize picks video. So it's basically a lot of research, and then just the content follows after that. It's a uh, it's a lot now that I'm talking That's about That's 24-7, dude. <laughs> yeah, I for, think I'm doing a lot. Yeah, for, but, damn, I'm dropping one video a week. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm tired. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, now that I talk about it, I mean, it's a lot, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to you, man. You're like uh, Bill Belichick with the <laughs> treadmill working, grinding, just like, scouting. I, I, I turned up fast, too. Like, I'm, 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 I'm running. I'm, I'm doing fast. It's uh, It's been awesome. <laughs> I'm getting the freaking miles I needed to do. Uh, that's awesome. So... UFC 292, you're excited for it. Yeah, having a little get together tomorrow. I know uh -huh. Austin's coming. I think Donnie's coming. He's got the happy dads. He's got for the happy for dads. It. I went to get some happy dads, but they didn't have any, so I settled for uh, some white claw. To sell white claw. Oh, white claw. <laughs> Rough. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a seltzer guy. I love seltzers, but I agree. White That's claws. all I can drink at my old age. Yeah, I'm a seltzer guy. I just 100%. turned 24 for those mm. that didn't know. And this came about because I celebrated my 24th and I saw you. It's like the first time I've seen you in two years. Yeah, it's been a while. And I like gave you your flowers. I'm like, dude, I see you're like killing it on YouTube right now. I was like, can you get my podcast, please? Heck yeah, dude. I mean, this is the first, like I told Tony earlier, the first in-person podcast. But yeah. I think it's freaking awesome. Yeah. I, I like it so much better than just like I know, doing I like Zoom it. or whatever. 100%. So, we're going to talk some NFL real quick. We're going to do NFL over and unders. First, we're going to start with NFL teams that we think are going to exceed the over on win totals. So, Andrew, do you want to start us off here, kid? Yeah, I'll start it off. I'm curious to hear if we have like the same like the same teams here. Or maybe yeah. we, we disagree with one, which I'm going to Let's but, see, kid. Um, I'm going to go with my favorite one. And I have one that stuck out the most was probably the, the Jets. Um, they set it at 9.5. Yeah. And I'm I'm taking the over. So I was hoping. I like that one too. Yeah, dude. I was hoping it was like 8.5. Because this is one I actually want to bet. And I actually want to put a lot on it. Mm -hmm. And I typically don't like betting season totals. Because they have your money for the whole season, right? right? So that's the only bad thing. But man, the Jets. I mean, I think they are they have a great offense. And their defense is good as well. Have you seen Hard Knocks? Yeah, I mean they're they're maybe that's why they're they're a total. Yeah. Up, people, <laughs> yeah, so um, top ten defense, maybe top five defense, and then listen to this offense, Aaron Rodgers, I my mean, guy yeah. at quarterback, your guy. They brought in Dalvin Cook out of, out of nowhere, like Brees. Uh, Brees Hallstock is going down in fantasy. Yeah, of that. but but they have a really good uh, running back. Like they can switch him. Oh and, yeah, uh, Michael Carter, uh, and then the the wide receiver room. Garrett Wilson, who I'm very high on, Same and then Mikel Ho Mikel Hardman Hardman from the Kansas City. Uh, they got Corey Davis, and then Rodgers uh, apparently brought in Lazard, Lazard. And, and, <laughs> and, and Randall Cobb yeah. for some who reason. Hasn't been so, good in like eight years, but yeah, yeah I, I think they're like buddies because it oh, seems like dude. Cobb follows Rodgers everywhere he goes. The Pledge of the Allegiance, he's like right <laughs> next to me. He's like, "Love you, brother." <laughs> they're best friends. Dude. <laughs> But yeah, dude, uh, give me the over. I could see the Jets winning at least 10 games. I could see them winning upwards 11 or 12. I'm very high on the Jets. I, well. I, I like that pick, honestly. The one thing that does scare me about the Jets mm -hmm. is their offensive line. Yeah, that is true. But they have so many freaking weapons. I, I think, know. I think Rodgers will... I, th I still think he's a little bit left in the tank. What is he, 39, I, 39 yeah. years old? I think so, too. I don't think they'll win the Super Bowl, but... No. I think it'll be better mm -hmm. than the Broncos last year, how everyone was hyped. <laughs> yeah, but I, I definitely think the Jets are going to be a solid team. Number three for me, I went the Eagles at okay. 11 and a half. I just, that team somehow, some way, just got better. Like, great draft. Mm -hmm. They got, uh, what's his name? The defensive lineman, Jalen Carter, okay. who's supposed to be the first overall pick, but got in some trouble. Fellow nine, they just got all the Georgia dudes. Another year, Jalen Hurts, I think he's on a mission this year. You see the lock screen. He's locked <laughs> in this year, dude. dude. He's trying. Yeah. It's funny. I actually had um, like a couple other teams that I was going to, to mention as well, and Eagles were, were one of those teams, mm -hmm. so I, I agree. It's um, one of the best teams in the NFL. I can see him winning upwards of 12, 13. And the NFC is like mm -hmm. so weak compared oh, to the AFC. Yeah, 100%. 
I mean, the Seahawks might finish third in <laughs> the yeah. NFC. So number exactly. two, Andrew. I like it. Um, uh, I, have a, I, have a, I have a lot of 9.5s for some reason. Like, I think all mine are at 9.5. I have a 9.5 one. Oh, maybe, maybe we have the same one. Um, <laughs> this is one I don't like as much as the Jets because mm-hmm. this is a team that their defense is not that good, but their offense, I'm really looking forward to this offense, and it is the, uh, the Jack Small Jaguars. Dude, I is swear it? guys think about the is Jacks. It? I did put them on okay. here, but that is a Dude. great pick. 9.5. Um, I love this Jaguars offense, man. Um, like I said, the defense worries me, but this is an offense where I feel like they can put up a bunch of numbers. Yes. And I feel like a lot of teams aren't going to be able to compete with these numbers. Yes. Um, Trevor Lawrence, I think he's finally starting to put it together. You know, whether you like his haircut or not, <laughs> I think he's a great Fabio. <laughs> I think he's a great football player. Um, Eddie Gannett running back, and then listen to these wide receivers. Christian Kirk, who I'm very high on, but I like guess him. who's coming back? Ridley. Calvin the Ridley. Ridley. He's, he's gambling back. on draft teams. He's ready to ball. He's ready to ball this so, year. Yeah, so Ridley probably shouldn't have watched this show, but uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's coming back, and I think these two are going to mesh well. Zay Jones in there, Evan Ingram at tight end. Zay Jones has solid here. He's good, man. He's good. So I think it's just a, such a talented offense. Trevor Lawrence is finally starting to, to look good. I like the Jags to get at least – um, 10 wins in this. Yeah, I like that pick. Number two for me, <laughs> I went in their powerhouse. I went the Chiefs. The reason That's so is, funny. That's so funny. That was the other team I wrote down. Really? Yeah. The reason is there's three things guaranteed in life. Mm-hmm. Death, taxes, and Patrick Mahomes winning over 11 games in the NFL. It is so true. It's Patrick Mahomes, the mm-hmm. best quarterback in the league, I think, by far. Right now, yeah. you know, there's an argument for who's two, who's three. There's not one for one. I'm going Mahomes. Travis Kelsey's still there. I know my dad's kind of low on him <laughs> on fantasy, but I got those boys out there in KC. It's funny. I mean, I you would think it'd be more than 11.5 for this team. Exactly. I mean, they're they're probably going to the Super Bowl, or at least yeah. if not, Super Bowl, I have money on very them already. Close. Yeah, well, plus 600. If why, you guys why not? Are doing why not? Yeah, crazy. so I agree. All right, <clears throat> so the third one I have here, um, it's nine point five. So, so maybe we uh, common tread. Maybe we agree. Maybe we don't. But I'm throwing this out here. It's a team that I think underperformed. I think the quarterback last year underperformed, but they've made some changes in terms of the uh, new offensive coordinator. Um, give me the over nine point five for the Chargers. Ooh, for the Chargers. That's a good one too. I was thinking about them. We're yeah. on same. We, we, we might we might be on to something. But um, Herbert was such a disappointment. Like I don't think he did like terrible, but there was like such high expectations for yes. him. Like this guy's gonna go out there and, and do amazing things, where he really didn't do that. But right. like I said, the new offensive coordinator, um, so many options at wide receiver. Mike Williams, who started to really come along last year. Keenan Allen, who's always been amazing, and then they got the new first round pick. Um, Johnson. Yeah, Johnston. So he should be good as well. Another option there. And then, you know, guys like Palmer and Guyton, who I also think are good, like, secondary wide receivers. So Austin Eckler, um, who scores one of the best, One of the best, if not the best, running back for fantasy in, in the league, Austin Eckler as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, just another really stacked offense. The defense isn't completely horrible. And like I said, I think this is uh, the year where we see Justin Herbert finally start to hopefully get it together because I had some serious high expectations for him last year. Yeah. I like that pick. So number one for me, a lot of people are down on this team. I think they're winning culture. I got the Packers at seven and a half wins. The NFC North, I think it's the Lions here, but I think I think the Packers honestly could finish second in this division. I think the Vikings are going to take a step down. Justin Jefferson's probably going to get two thousand yards, but I don't know. They might go down this year. Just hot take for the boy Packers. Jordan Love looks good too. Yeah, it's funny. I'll be talking about the Packers in the next segment, so I'll, I'll save my thoughts. I'll save my thoughts. I'll save my thoughts. Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to do the three NFL teams that we think are going to lose more than expected in 2023. So Andrew, you want to just start off with I'll the Packers? And, and believe it or not, uh, I guess I could. I guess I could. So for me, I've always been a, a big Packer fan. I mean, Packers are one of my my favorite teams. It's just uh, I was kind of surprised to see him set at seven and a half. Um, I mean, maybe love could be the real deal, but I just I, I I can't imagine them doing you know this well 
without Aaron Rodgers. Um, they have a good defense, though. They do, they do. I, I wrote that down. Defense should be all right, I put. <laughs> <laughs> all right? Just, <laughs> just it? Not all right, but they should be okay. They should be yeah. They should be good. Uh, I'm just not a big believer in the offense, so hopefully I'm wrong. But, um, yeah, I'm going to take the, the under. And I, I don't think they're going to be terrible. Like, I'm going to mention a team on here that's, that I think is going to be horrible. Might not win yeah. a game, but yeah. um, I don't know if they can get eight this year. Not eight. I don't know. I could see. It, man. I don't know. I re- I it's good to have some, some disagreement. I, I don't know. For sure. For sure. So number three for me, I'm going Broncos country, sucking it again. Okay. Just Russ, I don't think he has it anymore, honestly. Who blames the boy? He has Sierra as a <laughs> wife. I probably wouldn't be paying attention much to football with that. Yeah. What did they uh, set the, the line? They're at eight and a half. Wait. I just yeah, think no, I agree. I like that one. They can't finish higher than third with mm-hmm. that division, I think. I think the Raiders are going to suck. Yes. But. The Broncos, yeah. Chargers, I'm high on. They should be in the playoff mm-hmm. picture than Chiefs, obviously, we talked about earlier. Yep. So I got Broncos. I like it. That's one of them. Uh, I'm going to give another 9.5 because that's, that's my <laughs> that's thing. That's your number. Apparently. I'm going to go with, I don't know how you feel about this one, but I'm going to go with the, the Saints. Saints. Um, it's just such a high number. 9.5. It for, is. For this, when you think about it, like 9.5 for the Saints, it's just hard. Like in what world? Does the Saints, you know, win ten games here? They're really, they must be really high that Derek Carr is the reason. I guess, but I mean, I, I think they have a lot of weapons. Like they got Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, but I'm just not a big believer in, in Derek Carr. I'm really not. Yeah. So to see Derek Carr go out there, you know, new offense, um, win ten games, I, I, I just, I just don't. It's think, not like Sean Payton's still there too. Yeah, um, it's Dennis Allen. Yeah, I mean, who's I think, that guy? I don't know. <laughs> Who's that? Guy? I, like, I think they'll be all right, but just the thought of the Saints winning ten games, it just doesn't really make sense to me. So, yeah. So we'll see. I like that pick, number two. I don't know how you're going to feel about this. I got the Browns at nine and a half. The Browns, they let me down there for yeah. years, so might as well stay low. <laughs> I heard Deshaun's like throwing picks in practice oh, a lot. God. Yeah, he was calling out the Eagles for cheap shots on him. Uh, it's like, dude, the whole league is going to have cheap shots on you after that. Too many massages. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just, I don't know. that The AFC North is such a hard division, mm-hmm. too. The Ravens and the Bengals. That Who is, knows what the Steelers are That's probably are one of the toughest do. divisions as well. Steelers always go over 500. Mm-hmm. Do we really think they're going to go below 500 this year? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I got the Browns. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like it, but I don't like it because it's obviously the Browns. But, yeah, 10 games would be, it'd be nice. But Oh, yeah. I'd be so excited if I lost money, but they actually yeah. won 10 games. Yeah, if, like, if, we're, if, we're, if we're picking brain over heart, yeah. that is probably the, the way to go. Yeah. So, number one for the boy. I'm going to go with the worst team in the NFL, in my opinion. And it is going to be the Arizona Cardinals. Four and a half. I think they're gonna suck. I think they. I will think too. they're gonna. I don't know if they'll win a game. I mean, <sighs> Kyler Murray's been gone for a, a while, right? Or maybe. Uh, I thought they saw like six to eight weeks. Yeah, six maybe? to eight, like ha- about half the season. Um, one of the worst defenses in the league, if not the worst defense. Plus JJ Watt. I mean, it's like their best defense yeah, player. Yeah, I mean their defense is is horrible. So not only are they losing Murray for about half the year, they lost DeAndre Hopkins, which is a huge part of the offense. Mm-hmm. I'm just not sure, like. Like who this team beats? I mean, right, right. I don't know. Like I, I'm like I'm looking at the schedule. Like who does this this Cardinals team beat? Maybe when Murray comes back, he can make something happen. But I don't know. That's the thing that worries me about four and a half. Yeah, like, I, Kyler's I, obviously a pretty solid quarterback, yeah, good, and like this is such a quarterback driven league mm-hmm. that like quarterbacks can win games. Yeah, I feel so. like they'll go like zero for eight, and then maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe Kyler comes back and they win a couple. But right, yeah, give me the last. I mean, it's, I think it's one of I think that was one of the lowest I saw on there. Yeah, four and I half. think it is. Mm-hmm. That's a good pick. Number one for me, I went the Panthers at seven and a half. Mm-hmm. I just rookie quarterback, shaky offensive line. Frank Wright, you know, he kind of fizzled out with the Colts. But I just, I don't know. I think they might finish third in the division. Yeah. I like the Falcons better. I like the Saints better in them. Yeah, Buccaneers. Who knows? They got Baker shit field <laughs> <laughs> QB. So who really knows yeah. with that division? So yeah. I, I, not the biggest believer. I also watched Hard Knocks episode mm. two. Quinn and Williams had like eleven sacks. Really? Yeah. I mean, they were just killing the boy Bryce Young. So, Goodness. Panthers fans, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> it's gonna be a rough year. Yeah, I hate it, dude. Yeah. So now we're going to do player props over unders. 
we're going to start with the overs. Who do you like, Andrew, this year? <clears throat> so, let me go to my notes here. I'm going to take Cam Akers, Ooh. and I'm going to take the over on 750 rushing yards, and here's why. So, I unfortunately drafted Cam Akers last year. Oh. Tough. I think it was the third round. Oh, that's and I'm, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm pumped up. It's uh, I think a Thursday night football. I think it was the first game of the year. I'm excited <laughs> to watch my, my fantasy player go out there and perform to his best abilities. Yeah. And I'm, I'm watching the game, and Daryl. I think it was Daryl Henderson's out there oh. on the first snap of the game. And I'm like, okay, oh, uh, okay. Um, maybe he'll come in the next maybe drive. Maybe he showed up <laughs> late to the game or something. The next drive comes around, it's Daryl Henderson. And then the next drive, Daryl Henderson. And then he finally comes in with like, three minutes left in the second quarter mm -hmm. and he runs the ball and gets like negative one yard. <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't see him again to like the fourth. Like, what are you, what's going on, Cam? Everybody's dogging me in the chat, yes. in the, the fantasy oh, group chat. Dude. Cause I picked him so early. I was excited about it. This is so funny. Cause my one buddy picked Cam Akers <laughs> and he was at my house too. I was just ripping him. Oh my gosh, day. dude. It was, that's um, brutal. I think he'll have a bounce back year. I think so too. But yeah, it was like, like six straight games. Like I'm, I'm dropping, which it sucks. It sucks to drop your third round pick, but ended up dropping them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cam Akers finally started to get it together mm -hmm. at the, the end of the season. He started to finally look how I expect him to look. And he averaged 21 carries in the last three games, yep. and he had back-to-back-to-back 100-yard performances on the ground. So mm -hmm. I think if we get that version of Cam Akers, he smashes this and gets, gets 1,000 yards. So I think that's low. I think people are still down on him. And I think he's super talented. He yep. just needs the opportunities. And uh, no more Daryl Henderson. Yeah. I kind of think he's like the Josh Jacobs this He year. could be good, man. Because I remember good. drafting Josh Jacobs last year. I'm like, God, this is such a <laughs> shit pick. But he's like my third right back in. He yeah. was RB1 last year. I was like, Jesus. Oh, All right, gosh. I'll take it. So the player I like the over is Brian Robinson. They okay. have him at 750 yards. Last year, the man got shot, missed four oh. games, and ran over 750 yards. Oh, he got it all over there. Yeah, nice. almost 800 yards and missed nice. four games. So, I think he'll take a step. That Maybe 1,000 yards this year. I don't know. Safe bet, boys. That seems low. I like that. Safe like bet. That. Um, my next one is going to be somebody that is, like, this is my, you know, you know, you have that, like, sneaky pick written down yep, that you yep. don't want nobody to take in the draft. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And this is my sneaky pick late in the draft. And this was a guy that I even, I think I reached for him as well. Uh, Damian Pierce. Ooh, I like Damian I like Pierce that. quite a bit. Um, he's a rookie last year. This is his second year. Um, this guy is, I think, he's underrated because he's on the Texans. And like when you think right. of the Texans, you're like, oh, they're they're trash. But no, this guy's really good. Second year, I think he's going to get it done. Um, and then what did he have last year? So they have him set at 900.5 rushing yards, which is high. But last year in his rookie year, he did go out there and rush. I think over a thousand or close to a thousand. Um, I think at like nine ninety, yeah, like that nine eighty. Right. Like he was he, real close. He was like mark. like like ten yards away from a thousand. So you know, in the second year, I, I think he does get it. I, I, a guy that I I am very high on mm -hmm. um, this year, and I probably will be uh, either betting that or hopefully drafting him again. I, I got him in like something crazy, like the like the eighth or ninth round last yeah. year. This year he's probably going around like four or five, I think. I saw yeah, him. four or five. Yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds right. But, I yeah. wanted him last year too. Yeah, someone was... drafted him in like the sixth round. I was like. Are, you, are we kidding right now? Dude, he got it's it. It's like, I'm waiting man. for him. He got dude. it done. I was year. so upset when they stole him, but moving on. <laughs> I'm not moving on. So, number two for me, I have David Montgomery over his six and a half rushing touchdowns. Okay. Jamal Williams had 17 last year. He's filling that role with the Lions. I think the Lions have a way better offensive line than the Bears did last year. I like six and a half. Over. I think it gets that in three games. I, honestly, <laughs> I think no, it gets it in three games. Dude. I like David Montgomery. I want to draft him. Yeah, in my league. Yeah, where's he going? He's going. I want to say like seventh or eighth round. I yeah, yeah. RB two three. Yeah, that's low for the freaking Lions. Dude. I know. That's low. Well, they're high on Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, but yeah. I want the guy who's scoring. That yeah, touchdown. exactly. Yeah. Touchdown. Um. So my my last one is going to be one Garrett Wilson, and they have him set at what is it, uh, one thousand one hundred and fifty receiving yards, which is high. But but hear me out on this one. 
So this guy had over a thousand yards last year with obviously not the, the best quarterback play. Bill Hunter, Zach Wilson. Yeah, so now he has Aaron Rodgers. And then I'm just I'm just thinking to myself, like, what has Aaron Rodgers done, you know, with some of these top wide receivers? Like you think of Devontae Adams, obviously. Yes. Rodgers made him a star. Yes. Um Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson. Shout out the white boy. Yeah. Put Jordy, this on the map. Jordy Nelson, man. I mean, he wasn't good anywhere else. Like, he went to the Raiders. He wasn't that great. Right. Um, Rodgers made him great. So, this is the wide receiver one for the Jets. Yeah. Uh, Rodgers, number if one James guy Jones here. could lead the league in receiving James Jones? Do you I mean, remember that? If, yeah, if, if James Jones, I mean, Greg Jennings back in the Greg day. Greg Jennings. Donald Driver. Some of these guys. Yes. Man. But Garrett Wilson, I think, is super, super talented. talented. Yes. Um, so, not only does he have the, the Rodgers effect, but, but super talented. Give me the the over, which is, like I said, very high, but this guy can can crush it. I think is one of the best wide receivers of the year mm-hmm. this year. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. I was looking at that, too. Number three for me, I have Justin Fields over 18 and a half passing touchdowns. I know. The guy only threw, like, uh, 15 passing touchdowns. That's low get, for a quarterback, though. Yeah, yeah, super low. You get DJ Moore on that offense. I think Justin Fields is going to take an early. You look at the previous, like, trends of, Young QBs getting stud receivers. Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown, look at what they did. Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. They lit it up, dude. I don't know. I just That could be a sneaky play. Yeah, you said 18 and a half it was? Yeah, 18 and a half. That's a little bit over a touchdown a game. Yeah, for a quarter, exactly. For a quarterback. I mean, exactly. So, yeah, I don't, I don't hate that at all. Yeah. Thank you, my guy. Yeah, all right. sure. So we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're doing player props that will be under... This year, let's get it. What do you think? Let's get it. He's excited. I am going with DeAndre Swift. Okay. And I'm going to take the under on four and a half touchdowns here. So the Eagles are just running back killers. Like owning a Eagle running back is like the worst experience of your life because. <laughs> Say you have Miles Sanders, um, right, back yeah. in the day, and you're like, oh, Just I, last year. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you have Miles Sanders way back in the day, um, and you're expecting to go out there and, and have a great game, right? Right. And then all of a sudden, Gainwell comes in, and then oh. all of a sudden, Boston Scott comes in, <laughs> and all of a sudden, Jalen Hurts is, is vulturing a, a goal yes. line touchdown. So, I mean, this is a guy in Swift who is used to getting vultured. I mean, he got vultured, what, 20 times last year? 20, so, yeah, about yeah. 20. So he's going to get vultured by guys like Boston Scott, guys like Jalen Hurts. I mean, Jalen Hurts loves rushing touchdowns. At the yeah, 11, yeah. 12 last yeah. year. So I just feel like if he's not getting these touchdowns from more than a, a yard out, I mean, five, he'd have to get like five of them because I really think that Jalen Hurts is going to uh, sneak it in the middle every time. So give me the, the lower, which is, that's kind of low for a, a running back, 4.5, but right. I think they're kind of on to, to my thinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like Andrew's thinking that I'm here on this. Let's keep it low. I think they're on to that. <laughs> I like that pick. So, number one for me, I'm going to Chris Godwin under 800 receiving yards. He is Baker Mayfield, that yeah. quarterback. Don't draft any Bucks receivers this year. I Baker might get replaced by like week six. Yeah. I could see that too. Just stay away from the Bucks receivers. Save yourself. Don't bet on them. Yeah, I mean, it's actually funny you have Godwin because I have uh, Evans. Evans. So, so right there with you. Um, it's Touchdowns or receiving yards? Just receiving yards. yards. It's, okay. it's, it's a lot higher than Godwin. It's 925.5. Wow. I mean, is Baker even throwing 4,000 yards this year? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> Baker has 1,000 yards in two years, dude. I know. So that's that's a lot. I think, you know, what they're thinking is Evans is obviously a, a great player. Um, he has a lot of upside. We've seen what he, he's done in the past, but. You know what he's done in the past with like guys like Tom Brady. Even Jameis Woodson used to throw the ball around 50 times. He, th- <laughs> yeah. he, would, he would throw five interceptions. But, but he's slain that. But he, he, would, he would swing it around. So uh, I don't think ba- Baker's going to – I just don't see it with Baker as well. So yeah. we're, we're exactly on the same page there. Now this is a hot take. Okay. I have Jalen Hurts under nine and a half rushing touchdowns. Oh. I think he'll, he'll get a good amount. Get, but, yeah. You gotta stop, <laughs> please. I have last year in fantasy. I was oh, loving man. every bit of it, but can this guy like throw some touchdowns instead of running it up the middle? But they didn't ban the you push the quarterback. You know how like mm-hmm. he would sneak in, they would push him in every mm-hmm. play. I don't know, just gut feeling. Okay, under okay. nine and a half. All right, nine and a half is a lot. It is a lot, but he loves it. So we'll I see. Know. We'll see. He loves it so much. 
I'm feeling bold today. It is a, it is a little... I don't know. It is a little... You gotta bold. have one hot take. Yeah, you gotta take. have one hot take. And, and my next take, it may be hot or it may not be. I'm just gonna go with um, Michael Pittman. I'm gonna take the less on the receiving yards. It's set at 800.5. Mm. I don't know. I mean, Michael Pittman's a guy who I actually drafted him last year. And I like, too. In, in some games, it's like, oh, he looks really good. And then in <laughs> yes. some games, it's like, oh, he scored zero. <laughs> like, there's no there's no in between with Michael Pittman. Now they got a, a new quarterback, which is great. I'm not sure, you know, how that's going to work out. First year rookie. Right. Um, I just think the Colts offense as a whole is just going to struggle this year. So I think Michael Pittman, like I said, I think he's a great player, but inconsistent. Yes. And I'm just not in love with the Colts offense this year. So taking the. The under and um, I guess he wasn't horrible like that. Like last year, there were some really good games he had it, but towards the end, he kind of like yes. wasn't doing anything. It was kind of annoying. I kind of have a funny story. I traded yeah. him and Gabe Davis for Derrick Henry. What? This was right after like Pittman and Gabe Davis were going off. Oh yeah, there you go. So yeah. it didn't look as bad, mm-hmm. but still a shit <laughs> trade. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. <laughs> good trade for you. All right, the last one. I love this dude, but I'm going the under on this. Cooper Cup under 107 catches this year. 107. You think that is a lot? It is a catches. lot. And we're worried about like the injury. injuries. Injuries. He's pulling hamstrings already. I think just from like an injury perspective. Then that's we all know about Stafford too. Mm-hmm. What's Stafford's health? That's is, a lot. That has to be like the most out there out of all the players, right? It's it's up there. 107. Dude. My goodness. Well, boys and girls, the boys ran out of storage on the phone. I think it's time to get a camera. I'm currently looking at cameras right now but there was only like 35 seconds left if you enjoyed this video can you please like give a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already we'll see you next time peace